Hello and welcome to the Life in Ohio vlog for February 21st, 2021. Uh, not much of an update on the house this week. One thing uh, that I noticed I'm actually now leaving for church. Um, so I'm going to have a little talk here, a little discussion about the weather events of the last week. Um, we're, uh, well, really, uh, Ohio's been doing, go, undergoing this for a couple weeks now, at least, if not all of, uh, tail end of January into February. But, uh, this is kind of related to the house because I'm going to have some tips that I'm going to put in here, and they're not in any specific order, these are just things that I have done as we're building our new home, which will be our last earthly home, if I have anything to do with it. <laughs> you know, um, the plan for this house is that this is going to be the place that we uh, either die or we uh, move from into, you know, a care facility or whatever. You know, probably die in my case. Um, it's kind of morbid to think about that, but anyway, um, so we built, did several things. Now, some of this stuff I just did because I thought it was a good idea. So some of this is revisionist a little bit, but these are important to this discussion. Um, so in case you're buried under a rock, didn't know, uh, there were massive power outages due to ice and snow all over the state of Texas and far south as Corpus Christi uh, and in places like Austin, so on and so forth. These are places that are not used to weather like we have right now here in Ohio. All right. So, uh, they're, sorry, I need a drink, um, but they're undergoing, um, uh, a lot of stuff now it's starting to rise above freezing so some things are actually they've been above freezing for a couple days now where we haven't quite yet gotten there yet but uh there are many things that were wrong in Texas uh, kind of the, some, some of the things I'm going to discuss here um, first are that those things uh, Texas has a huge amount of wind power a large amount of their power comes from wind uh, something I didn't know about until this happened um, but they actually have one or two nuclear plants and a lot of windmills and the problem is is this is like a once in a lifetime event in Texas it'll probably never ever get that cold again in, te in, in the state in many people's lifetime so a lot of the people who live there have no clue um, it kind of goes further to that, though, where I think we as an American populace, well, really a modern populace, also don't have any clue. Uh, so, uh, but the biggest thing was the windmills, they were frozen. And it doesn't really pay Texas to, when they put new windmills in, to have them appropriately winterized against this kind of a wet of a cold snap in may many days this 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 uh year during the snap down there it was colder in texas than it was here in ohio so um it doesn't really pay for them to do that okay so then the crackpot conspiracy theorists and, and there are those on the left and on the right uh, they basically, some of them had said, like, uh, the Democrats will say, well, that's because we need more wind power. It was like, well, no, the, all the wind power is what failed here. So that's not going to solve the problem. Um, and then those on the right said, well, that's because they have no coal burning fire, uh, power plants. Well, when you build anything in Texas, it's gonna 
be built for the kind of weather they typically have. All right? They don't typically have this weather. So even if they have more coal plants, there, there is still a likelihood that the coal plant would fail too because the, the coal plant would not be built to handle this kind of weather. So that's one and there's a whole lot that was wrong you know there's the whole ted cruz thing which you know i don't know what people thought ted was going to do uh, as a united states senator working as an elected official for the federal government for his state of texas other than just calling president biden and say hey i need our state needs help that's really all he can do that and of course pass legislation after the fact to help it from becoming a problem. So, little short thing, kind of tiny bit political, but, but the moral of the story is everyone had this screwed up. So, that's one. Uh, so, if we can't count on government to, to, to help us, well, first off, if you're doing that in the first place, that's where you're wrong. You should never have done that. Uh, we have a unique thing that we can do here in this in this country in that we we have autonomy we have freedom for the moment so we can take control of some of the things that in our are in our life and fix them all right so we're building a new house it's now like this is kind of, kind of where some of the revisionist stuff comes in but if you're building a new home now, or if you're looking at it, or if you're looking at upgrading appliances in your current home, or if you're looking at doing uh, some home renovations, consider some of these things. All right. One, the fireplace. Now, many fireplaces, that get, like we're getting uh, another fireplace put in in our house, and it's not a wood burning one. Although if you get a wood burning one, that's fine too. But uh, we're going to have a gas one, all right? And depending on which gas one you get, um, and I'm not exactly sure what we're going to have. It's whatever the home builder included, all right? Uh, so that fireplace can be our, our, our savior, you know, because the furnace isn't going to be able to pump air because the furnace, even a gas furnace, requires electricity to pump air through the home to keep the home heated all right so that gas fireplace could be our savior uh depending on which one it is now now i, I was listening to a certain podcast by a certain vj uh adam the adam curry uh, the no agenda podcast by the way and uh he had one in he and his uh wife had one in their home in austin and they were able to turn it on, even without electricity. So, that's one. Two, if you're putting in a new stove, all right. The beautiful thing about gas stoves, and, and, they, and when I was listening to No Agenda, and they were talking about this, and I was incredulous. But uh, they said their neighbors who also had gas stoves didn't know that you could actually light the burner with a match. Yep, you light them with a match. So, if you're going to upgrade your stove but, or replace your existing electric stove and you have the connections, because you do have to have the gas line uh, within reach of your the place where your stove goes in the kitchen, all right, then uh, do it. Uh, we, we actually have had that ability in our old home for the last 20 years, we never connected it. So another good thing was we actually had, now I don't think this is as common anymore, especially since I can't find any grills, but we also had the ability to connect uh, our uh, grill to the natural gas on the home. So that means we, we had technically had an infinite way to, to cook food. All right, so in our home, our new home is going to have both of those. 
another thing uh, that I'm glad that we added to our house uh, for multiple reasons uh, is we have a screen room on our house. Now, this is a non environmentally controlled room because it's got screens on it. You know, one of the things I'm looking at doing after we move in is seeing if I can't have some uh, custom uh, storm windows so that we can block the screens off during the winter. Uh, but so it's got enough room out there for like a table and chairs and uh, don't want to put the grill inside because you know not a safe place to cook in there but at least we'll have a space outside the, the uh, screen room where we can put a grill and we can cook all right but there are alternative uses especially during a cold snap such as this that you could do to keep you and your family well fed and that is since you have will have no power in a nice storm you can take all the food that's in that fridge put it in a cooler Put it out in the screen room. You don't probably won't need any ice because it's hey, it's cold, okay? And the only reason I even suggest putting it in a cooler is that um, you don't want the food to get too cold. You know, because if it goes down to six or seven degrees in that screen room, Fahrenheit, that food could throw freeze. If it's, so uh, now the upside there is if you already had frozen food, you can use frozen food out there, you know, but the downside is is you probably don't have a way to cook it <laughs> Especially since a lot of frozen food uh, is microwavable Although like some not all of it would be like you could uh, do some fries in, in your uh, in your oven probably uh, Although that's probably uh, That's the one question. I'm not sure about is out to double check and see if I can't if you can't um, <coughs> uh, <laughs> start your stove uh, the oven part of the stove um, with a match I know you can the, the burners so um, so beyond that then we're talking about well what other things do you keep in your home to help with surviving in your home during a snap like this okay food um, have some sort of non-perishable food that you could keep on hand that has a long shelf life that you can use in these situations and learn how to cook it too now granted a lot of that like if it's like the dehydrated stuff um, it's not much there's not much to it it's just a matter of uh, of uh, heating up some water okay so heat the water up and you're good you know so uh, then the next thing is is to have a uh, equipment of some sort knives uh, would be good and I don't mean kitchen knives I mean like a full-on tough survival knife like uh, I got one from trade I've also got a hoary hoary knife that's good for digging, which really is pointless in this kind of weather. But still, I, the nice thing about that hoary hoary is it's got a saw on the side, um, so I can use that to cut wood if I needed to. All right. So, and then like I said, learn how to use it. Uh, there's several YouTube channels I'm going to recommend for survival information. One of them is Drop Forge Survival. Uh, Chris, uh, yeah, I don't remember his last name, but Chris on our, on Drop Forge, Forge Survival is fantastic. Now, he hasn't been doing too many videos as of late, but uh, I think he's might going to start back up because uh, he lives in Texas right now and he's undergoing this. And guess what? He's fine because he's followed some of these things. All right. Now, there's certain things that you need to do. Um, to make sure that um, your home doesn't get damaged. I learned this kind of the hard way in our apartment, uh, although it was kind of unexpected because we've had water running the whole time, but um, this kind of drove it home to me. 
once, especially it, depending on how your home is built, all right, you're going to want to make sure that you have some water trickling through uh, the pipes during uh, really cold snaps, okay, especially overnight. Water freezes, all right, and then of course it'll burst in your your walls or or in your floor if you like in the case of our new home a lot of the water piping goes through the floor so uh, it would go through and fill up the slab with water it's not a good thing all right so you want to keep that water moving through those pipes because if you don't the water will freeze. If the water's just sitting in the pipes, it can get cold enough to freeze. And then you'll have a situation where you're gonna have that line burst, all right? Now, our new house is probably a little bit more insulated from that. It's got the newest version of, of PEX probably going into it. So uh, it doesn't have CPVC like my old house had. So it, it should be pretty good, but it doesn't mean I'm still not gonna still do that, especially when it gets really cold. Um, now in our apartment we had a pipe burst, the supply line burst going into the uh, uh, hot water heater. Unfortunately, the way does well, fortunately and unfortunately, the way they designed the house, the apartment, the hot water heater was outside. <laughs> All right, so um, that's a plus and a minus. A plus in that there wasn't much water that got in the apartment. A negative in that um, was outside. You know who who does that in Ohio? Anyway, so we've been especially uh, once it gets probably down below twenty. You don't want to set a trickle, especially you know. And it's all going to depend on, on uh, how your home's built. I'm not in any fear that our new home will have a, a pipe bursting issue because it's going to have quite a, a bit of insulation around things in the main area where the, where all the water will come into the house uh, the laundry room slash the, actually there's a furnace slash hot water tank room where that will be so that um, that room there since the heater is in the same place it should be warm enough in there uh, so at least that part will be okay but if the water is moving elsewhere in the home that kind of it's kind of double insurance so <laughs> uh, but do that other things uh, like I said you, we talked a little bit about the disaster food um, look into a generator now for a home you can do it a couple ways you can have one that uh, that you Just pull out of the garage whenever you you know open the garage up and uh, start it up. Um, you can have that kind of style of generator, or you can go to Lowe's and and or Home Depot, and you can actually buy a whole home generator that will attach to your house, and you can even have it set up so that it automatically kicks on uh, when the power goes out. All right. Not something, you know, I don't think everyone ha can can do that. If you live in an apartment like we do now, you obviously can't do that. So other alternatives would be uh, get a Jackery uh, uh, battery. They, they have Jackery batteries that have both 12-volt power outlets as well as USB power outlet, outlets and an inverter uh, so that you can charge up, like, your laptop and stuff like that, all right? And they make them in different sizes. Anchor also makes a similar product. And these are good for literally days of charges on your smartphone. Uh, so <laughs> it's good stuff. All right. And it's not going to hurt to have them because you can use them all the time anyway. Uh, anytime you, you want to charge your phone and you're either away from the house or you're on a camping trip. That's the other thing too. Learn how to camp. <laughs> I think everybody should do that at least once in their life because then you will at least have the skills to go 
uh, uh, to set up a shelter and to learn how to cook outside. <laughs> um, I love to camp. Uh, for me, it's entertainment and relaxing too. But there's so many things I've learned over the years that have helped me in camping. Like, for example, learning to love cast iron uh, cookware. This cast iron cookware, especially like like uh, uh, fry pans and Dutch ovens and stuff, easy to clean up. You know, you don't have to spend uh, hours scrubbing them, and they. Uh, or one of the few pieces of cookware that gets better every time you use it. So, um, but I digress. <laughs> the other part is, is a lot of the same stuff you need for survival is the same you need for camping. Uh, a propane stove is something handy to have when you're camping, but when you're not camping, and if you have an issue you can fire that sucker up and cook. You know, if for some reason your stove will not start from a match, um, like if you have an electric stove, bring that thing in there, cook. You can do that. Uh, there's plenty of, plenty of ventilation. I'm not too worried about that in a home. Uh, but you could do that. It's probably probably not the best idea, but in a pinch you could do that. A lot of people are buying Blackstone uh, griddles, and they're used using them just like they do a grill in their house. Well, now you can use that as a as a way to cook uh, when your inside stuff doesn't work either. You know, so you know, camping gear has multiple uses, and not of all, not, most of them isn't just camping. So uh, that knife you buy for a uh, for survival could be used when you're camping. So, I already mentioned one YouTube channel, a Drop Forge Survival. Another one I'm going to mention mention is Survival on Purpose. Um, Survival on Purpose is a good channel that they, they do a lot of reviews uh, on different gear. Um, they talk about the Apaka box, uh, which is Creek Stewart's uh, survival box, and uh, also the Battle box, and a few other things. And a lot of the stuff that's on that channel is oriented around camping and survival watch that show it's good stuff um i love uh, i love the host there uh, uh i'm trying to remember i think his name's dave i don't remember i have to go back and look I'll, I'll put a little thing below here but watch his channel and you'll get a lot of good things in the end and i've talked the whole way to church almost uh but um so this will be a little bit longer of an update but in the end, government's not going to be the one responsible, or should not be the one responsible for helping you. You should help yourself. All right. And if you're not in a good financial position to do that, make sure you get there. There's things that you can do to make sure that you're prepared. And survival doesn't have to be expensive either. Um, it generally isn't. That it's generally very affordable to learn how to survive. Camping gear isn't expensive. Uh, you know, of course, the, some of the things I talked about, like the stove and stuff, is kind of expensive. But guess what? You can do. I, I gave you really multiple ways to cook food, all in this video. Uh, one way I haven't mentioned is campfire. So, you got one of those little uh, fire pits that you enjoy, just standing around. Sitting, uh, sitting out there and enjoying it. Now you can use that to cook too. So, in the end, everything you have has multiple uses. If if everything you have has multiple uses, you're not going to be at a disadvantage. This has been Life and High Vlog for today. Hope you have a great one and take care.